each major branch of philosophy builds on previous ones in some way, whether affirming or rejecting them, and the history of human thought goes back thousands of years, but the whole history would take way too long. So we'll start with a man named George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. While some of his ideas really originate with people like Immanuel Kant and Jean-Jacques Rousseau, it was the life and death of Hegel that lit the fuse of Marxism, so the credit mainly goes to him. In 1807, he published the book The Phenomenology of Spirit. Hegel was obsessed with viewing the world through theory and speculation, and believed the highest type of science was knowledge, but not the rationalism of the recent High Enlightenment period. Ideas and theories were more real than the material world, and that was his knowledge. Essentially, knowledge was theory and speculation. The Latin root of the word speculation is speculum, which means to reflect, and the common image of speculation of the time was a man looking into a mirror that reflected the sky above him. Hegel's knowledge was derived from reflection on abstract things about the world, not on concrete things within it. Instead of gaining knowledge about the world through experimentation like Isaac Newton, who he hated, Hegel would have preferred to think of gravity and mass in abstract thought and, notably, to arrive at the truth through his own philosophical methods, not with the help of any outside phenomena. His main philosophical tool was called the dialectic. In 1820, he published the Encyclopedia of Philosophical Sciences in which he elaborated on this idea. A dialectic is a method of philosophical argument that involves contradictory processes between opposing sides, like in any modern debate. But Hegel was a philosophical successor of Rousseau, who had abandoned reason in his later years in favor of emotion. So Hegel wasn't satisfied with the traditional, rational dialectic that stretched all the way back to Plato. Plato's dialectical method used logic and reason to come to some sound conclusion. But Hegel believed Plato's logic couldn't reach past skepticism to full knowledge. He believed Plato's dialectic fell short of finding truth. It was only an approximation. Hegel's dialectic had three sides instead of two, and wasn't part of classical logic. He said it was instead part of every concept and everything true in general. It has three moments. The first is initial understanding, or the positive moment, when a concept seems to have a stable definition. Then the second moment, the negative, is a moment of instability when determination shifts from the initial understanding to its opposite. This is what Hegel called Aufheben and is a crucial concept. It is a German word that means both to cancel and to preserve. Hegel was obsessed with this idea, and using this idea of cancellation and preservation, the third moment is called the speculative moment, where the essences of the first two cancel out each other and are both preserved, leading to a higher knowledge of the concept. A modern example of the Hegelian dialectic put into practice would be this. Take the concept of freedom. The people of a country have a certain amount of self-evident freedom. This is the first moment. The country experiences a war and installs a dictator, destroying individual freedom. This is the second moment. The Aufheben of these two concepts of freedom would be a permanent state that allows freedom, the speculative moment. If combining a thing and its opposite and getting anything other than nothing doesn't make any sense to you, well, you're not alone. But then again, you're operating on logic, and Hegel didn't like logic. This Hegelian dialectical method is the engine upon which the entirety of the rest of this history runs, so it's crucial that you understand it. From here on out, the moments of the dialectic will be referred to as the thesis, antithesis, and synthesis, respectively. Hegel was consumed with trying to find what was truly real. He believed that if the concept of being was a thesis, and nothing was its antithesis, then the synthesis of these two concepts was becoming. When you see later scholars refer to transformation and unending progress for change, now you know where those ideas of becoming, or those beliefs, come from. Speaking of belief, Hegel also tried to understand the Christian belief in the Trinity through his dialectical framework. God was the ultimate truth, or what he called the absolute idea, completely transcendent. His opposite was nature, firmly rooted in the world and not transcendent at all. But since nature is unthinking and therefore incomplete, the synthesis of these two concepts, the absolute idea and the natural world, had to be in something higher than nature, and Hegel believed that to be embodied in the highest, most abstract form of humanity, the state. Here is the beginning of evil. 
Common sense would say that a thing and its opposite when combined would cancel each other out and remain that way, but Hegel wasn't partial to common sense, and so history unfolded in his abstract world. The Christian belief was that Jesus Christ is the true bridge between God and the world, but Hegel replaced him with the state. That means Hegel's philosophy and all ideologies built upon it, including Nazism, Marxism, and identity politics are all Christian heresies. They are all born out of the idea of adding something to God or replacing him outright, since he is apparently not enough for us. Indeed, Marx himself allegedly said, my object in life is to dethrone God and destroy capitalism. But here's where the ideas get really weird. Hegel believed that spirit, or Geist, comes from conditions created by the state. The object of spirit would meet its opposite, the subject of spirit, and synthesize to create a world spirit. Eventually, the dialectical process would progress enough that the world spirit would no longer be worldly but would become the absolute idea. The state would become God. Here again, we have the idea of being and nothing synthesizing into becoming. In short, the absolute idea, God, creates the state, the state creates the culture, and the culture creates ideas, which progress in a dialectical process until the state becomes the absolute idea. God must create the mundane world in order to compare himself to it and realize that he is God, which is done through constantly synthesizing contradictions. Hegel believed the seeds of the divine were embedded in the culture, which would be worked out over time until the state became God. This is nothing short of alchemy. As the alchemists believed the seeds of gold needed to be awakened within lead, the Hegelians believed the absolute idea needed to be awakened within the culture. Interestingly, this has some overlap with New Age spirituality, which says that God lies within each of us and we just need to be awakened to our divine natures. But that's for another time and another video. Back to Hegel and his spirits. Perhaps this is all the story would have been if Hegel never died and he maintained control over his ideas forever. But he was human like all of us and his death in 1831 caused a major rift in his acolytes. The Hegelians split into young and old. The old Hegelians were super conservative and believed Hegel's ultimate idea had already been realized in the state of Prussia at the time. The young Hegelians believed the ultimate idea had yet to be teased out of society, and one of them was a man named Karl Marx. 